Hey, this is Anjali, and today we are going to do user defined data types. So, user defined data types in C are basically categorized into three forms that is, structures, unions, and enumerated data types. But what exactly are user defined data types? Now, as we know that the data types are to define like which type of value you are going to store in a variable, we have used data types like integers, characters, floats. And then we have used arrays. So broadly categorizing your data types are categorized into primitive data types, derived data types, and user defined data types. The primitive ones are your integer character float and all. The derived category has arrays, matrices, strings, and in user defined data type, we have these three. That is a data type which as a programmer, I'm going to create of my own. So when we are creating a new data type to store certain data, that is called user defined data type. So we have three options in this. The first one is structures that we'll be discussing in this lecture. So structure is basically used to group the elements which are related to one topic and they might be of different data types. Like we had one problem with areas that you can have multiple elements, but those elements have to be of same data type. In case of structures, we group the elements not on the basis of the data type, rather on the basis of their relevance. Like if I have to store data about student, so the data about student can be his role number, name, marks, class, father's name, mother's name, which includes multiple elements of different data types. So I can have that. So over here, structures will have elements of different data types and they are just used for the grouping purpose just for grouping the elements together so that you can unite them and use them as a one unit. Now, how do we define a structure? To define a structure, we have a keyword called struct. So you have to write struct in small letters. So we have to define a structure before using the structure for taking variables because it's a user-defined data type and you are the programmer, so you're going to define what elements will be there in the structure. So we write the keyword struct then we have to give a name to the structure that can be termed as its tag name. It has to be a valid identifier. That means the same rules you have to follow, which you follow for naming a variable. In curly brackets, you have to mention all the elements you want to have in this. And then we have a semicolon at the end of the structure definition. An example for structure is given over here. Like I've made structure for student. So I've taken struct student. Then in brackets, I've taken int roll number comma marks. That means it will have two integer variables. And then I have taken a string char name 20. So its name is a variable which can hold a string of maximum 20 characters in it. And then we close it. This is called structure definition. No memory is allocated right now for any of these elements. This is just to tell the compiler that this will be my data type and it will have all these elements within it. No memory is allocated at this point of time. Then we have to declare the structure variable. Structure variable can be declared at two places. One is with the definition itself. Like when you define the structure, you give struct tag name. And at the end of the curly bracket, you can write the variable names as well. So I've written variable one comma variable two, and you can declare as many variables as you want. Like here we have done struct student, and then I've declared two structure variables, a comma b. So now when the variables are declared, memory is allocated for the structure. But how much memory will be allocated for the structure? Now for one structure variable, let's say A, how many bytes will be allocated? If I'm using a compiler which uses two bytes for integer, it will be 2 plus 2, 4, and 20 for 20 characters. So it will be 24 bytes allocated to one structure variable. If my compiler is taking four bytes for integer, Accordingly, it will be 28 bytes. So it depends. So now this one, if we take two bytes only, this will take 24 bytes for A as well as 24 bytes for B. So they will get their separate memory allocated for them. It will be allocated for as many variables you declare. If I declare 10 structure variables, 24 bytes each, 240 bytes in total will be allocated for that. So the key points over here are that no memory is allocated at the time of structure definition. Memory is allocated only at the time of the variable declaration. One way of declaring the variable is this, where you define it with the structure definition itself. The second option is that you define the structure somewhere in the program and later you can declare its variables. For that, you need to write the keyword struct. Then you have to write name of the structure 
and then variable name. This line can be given anywhere in the program to declare a structure variable. So this is how we declare the variables. Okay, variables are declared, but now then you have to use them in the coding. Now this variable a also has a roll number name and marks. Same way b has a roll number name and marks. How would you differentiate? How would you identify that this roll number belongs to a or this roll number belongs to b? For that in C, C++ or Java, we have an operator called dot, which is called member of operator. This dot operator is used to refer to the elements. If I have to use roll number for A, I'll be writing A dot roll number. If I have to use marks for A, I'll be writing A dot marks. If I have to do the same thing for B, I'll write B dot roll number, B dot marks, B dot name. You will get this point in a better way when we do this example. So this is our C program to just declare structure named student, which has roll number, marks, and name. So I have defined the structure above main. So it's a global definition, means a variable of the structure can be declared in any of the function in the program. Then I have declared two variables for that struct student A comma B. Memory is allocated at this point of time. Then I have given a message like enter roll number, name and marks for first student. And since the first value is an integer, second is a string, third is an integer. Then we get the value in a dot roll number, a dot name, a dot marks. So we have ampersand with integers, with strings you don't have to put an ampersand. So we get the value over here like this. So we have inputted the value for the first student, now we have to input the value for the second student. So I have given the code for that also, that enter roll number, name and marks for second student. And this time we get the value in B dot roll number, B dot name and B dot marks. So we get the details of two students like this. I can do any kind of operation on the values I want, but in this example, I'm checking which student has got more marks. So for that, I have checked if A dot marks is greater than B dot marks. If it is, we are printing A's name that he has scored more. Otherwise, we have printed B's name, that B has scored more. So this is the code which just input the details of two students and tell who has scored more out of the two. Let's say the roll number of first student is 3, name is Aditya and he scored 78. The other one is 5, the name is Parul and she has scored 83. So it says Parul has scored more. If the first student has got more marks, it will print the first student's name. So that's how basically we use structures in a C program. I hope you understood that. We can make any structure like this for an employee. I can have employee details like ID, name, salary and everything. Then I can have a, for a product which will have product name, cost and all. And anything possible, whatever you can think of, you can group those elements together and make a structure out of that. So that's how we define structures. Hope you understood the concept. In case of any doubt, write in the comments section below. And do subscribe the channel if you've not subscribed yet. Thank you.